Okay, I think we can get started. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. This is Sig API, Cubeboard Sig API, April 23rd. Could you share the link of agenda in this chat? If everyone can put their names in attendees. And I'm going to share my screen. Okay, <clears throat> so um, I know we have uh, pending discussion items from the last call. Uh, before we take that on, just a quick shout out for this PR. So um, Lee uh, is trying to see if we can graduate an API or a feature as beta um, in 1.2. Because our uh, feature graduation, um, feature lifecycle proposal is still, um, you know, shaping up, um, it, it is almost there. This feature could use an exception. It was already alpha in the last release. So retrospectively, it would be nice to put it in beta in 1.2.0 because that process is still being uh, defined. Uh, I'm okay to allow this feature with a with a caveat that they should not be used as an example for future exceptions to be made. This is a one-time thing. So uh, if folks have more thoughts on this, uh, please chime in. Um, to this uh, PR. Okay. Um, I see Mike is here. Uh, Mike, do you want to take this next topic? Yeah, sure. If you um, just click on the issue. Um, sure. I, I feel like this should be a pretty easy thing. So. <laughs> I kind of gave a long, more long-winded definition last time, but um, basically this issue is about potentially changing API behavior and not necessarily API um, you know, fields or anything, but maybe that's something we can talk about. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so the uh, reporter uh, works for a company that writes backup and restore software. And they have a use case where um, they want to restore VM disks from a backup. Um, and their assumption was you could just stop a VM and um, you know delete the uh, data volumes, uh, PVCs and restore them using a special way that we have to restore them. And that would be good and it would work no problem. The problem is that once you delete um, the data volume, our vert controller will try to reprovision everything so that you get in this race condition between this backup uh, software that is trying to restore the DV and the PVC and vert controller, which is also trying to create a new instance of it. And, okay. um, and, you know, I think I agree with them in that I think it would be better if the vert controller does not um, worry about provisioning data volumes until the VM is uh, until the VM is you know requested to be started. Um, so yeah, I guess this is a change in behavior. Um, I would like to make yeah make the change that I think it makes the most sense actually, um, even for right now for, you know, wait for first consumer storage, you of course have to wait for the VM to be started for anything to be provisioned anyway. Um, so yeah, I would like to change this behavior to where we don't uh, try to provision data volumes when the VM is stopped. Um, so my questions are, what, what do you think of that? I would like to make that the default. And then maybe uh, 
you know, as a backup, have an annotation or something for to do it the old way. Or if if you guys feel strongly that the existing behavior should be preserved, do we have an annotation to do it the way that I want to? And uh, yeah, so looking yeah. for a guidance here. Yeah, so some questions for you. So um, <clears throat> when a VMI, so when a VM restore is created, the controller creates VMI for it, and then the VMI controller creates the data volume for it. Is that correct understanding? Uh, yeah, so... Um... Yeah, I think we should forget about the the virtual machine restore API because they're they're not even like releasing that. But yeah, when we do a virtual when we do a restore, um, we actually create the the restored PVCs have um, and and data volumes have new names, so we restore to like a new mm -hmm. okay. you know, generated name. Thing, and then we update the VM spec to point to the new stuff and delete the old stuff. Makes so sense. But they don't, they don't is... want to do that. They want to preserve the names. So it's that's where we have the uh, contention. Yeah, that makes sense. But who generates that new name in the restore part? Is that a uh, VERT controller? A again, uh, so VERT, con no, that, that's in our restore. I, I think we don't have to talk about our virtual machine restore at all here. <laughs> I, I think the, the main issue is with the VERT controller. Um, and it, yeah, it just uses the name that is in the um, the data volume template uh, definition. Got it. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. So there I, is a section in the VMI which is called data volume template. Uh, so VMI dot spec dot data volume template. It's, whatever it's in it VM, is. not VMI. VMI Got doesn't. It. Need yeah, to. that's what I was looking for. Where is the source of this? Uh, it, it, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Can I ask? So I don't understand. Like uh, based on if I read this correctly, the. The DV and PVC are created now based on the VM. Doesn't matter if it stopped or started, right? Right. Whenever the VM is created, yes, we'll not create. created when it's the manifest is there. Not it doesn't have to be. It can be created as stopped, and and still the DV and PVC are created. Correct. Right. The VM can be stopped, and we'll create the data volume, which will yeah. create PVC. And now you are suggesting the the behavior will be that it will only be created not when it is when not when the VM is actually created on the API server, but only when it is started. Correct. Okay. So so then uh, the so I have two questions. One, will it break? In which in which way it can break current uh, users, if at all? And the second question is, if this is the case, then it, then the DV and PVC are supposed to be dependent on the VMI, not on the VM object, no? No, I mean the 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 um, uh, so yeah, I mean the the VMI has sort of all the persistent, um, yeah. I, I, I think you know we wanted to keep the data. Are you wondering asking why data, VMI doesn't have data volume templates? No, actually, I I don't care about the. So okay. if I understood correctly, you can have the templates in the. You have the template like the the VM has the VM the VMI, the VM has the template there of it of a VM right, and it also has a a template for the for storage right. Yep. So, but it when the VMI is created, these templates become a real thing, right? Something like that. Yeah. Like they become a, an instance. So, yep. my question. So, the VMI will be referenced to that uh, storage thing, right? The VMI will have references to, yeah, the PVCs or, or data volumes. Yeah. Yes. So, why? So, the question is the same way the. I'm not. I'm not just asking. Like maybe it's not correct, but 
the you could you could say that the once the VMI is created, the subsequent like the the outcome of it is that also someone looks on VMIs and based on the VMI it will create the needed storage uh, objects. But it's if you if you want to monitor the VM, it's I mean I think the problem here is that if you monitor the VM, then you'll have to monitor its state. So you you see that it is in running. Then you will do it, and then if you see it stopped, then what will you do? So it's that. Oh, okay. So you're talking about the mechanics, like forget about. Uh, it will just provision the data volumes when a VMI is created. Forget about. Yeah, because that's the yeah. real, real, real the running thing. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Outcome. No, that that yeah. that makes total sense. That makes total sense, and I think it will, for the most part, map to yeah when VM yeah that does exactly what I want. I think that probably. Implementation wise is is better, yeah. Yeah. So uh, with that, I would still wonder about uh, the first question, which yeah. is who and what what kind of users will break with. This. So obviously, if someone is using wait for first consumer storage, there's no difference. Um, I think the effect is that, I don't know, I could imagine someone that um, says, okay, I know it takes a long time to import these data volumes. Uh, so, it, you know, I'm just gonna uh, create the data volume definition now. I don't need the VM till tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm gonna create the data volume definition now and it will get all the disks ready and then tomorrow I'll be ready to start it. Um, okay. It's I don't like know a, if that's a, I don't know if that's a contrived. That seems like kind of a contrived case, but um, yeah. yeah. It's like one like this. This will be like uh, this is like a, this solution is a lazy like a lazy initialization. While the previous one you could say in advance that you want you right want it and it's but how much time like let let's be practical. How, how much time? If they're it's using the like the you know our recommended flows where you're cloning from uh, another PVC in the cluster, I mean that happens like instantly. I mean you know seconds. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So I I can give you some data points here. Um, so we have been running infrastructure where we don't use the data volumes. Uh, so we'll directly not be broken by this change, but we, we do download the, um, the, the ISO before the VMI starts because uh, the VMI creation to running time is critical for us. So we would like to pre-populate the, the volume required for the VMIs to boot and then start uh, the VMIs on, on nodes. So, and and the other part, how long does it take? It's a hit or a miss. Sometimes we we see it takes longer than five minutes, depending on what kind of uh, timeouts that we have configured. A five minute a pipeline could break waiting for that volume uh, data to be downloaded. Uh, so technically this proposal will not break us. So I'm not opposed to what is being proposed here, but users like us who do care about uh, creation to running time uh, will end use data volume, will see that they are having problems now. Yeah, I think yeah, definitely your your storage is case is special. Um, I've read about that. So you basically yeah, you have all the um, disk images on each node, and um, yeah, I think I think um, for someone using traditional data volumes though, where each uh, I, I, I so I don't. It, so you're you're optimizing. You want the VMI to start up quick Correct. when it's yes. needed, I guess. Um, and yeah, 
the only yeah, we can't have a user experience that um, someone waits for five ten minutes uh, to get their uh, you know VMI's provision. Yeah. So so yeah, yeah. I guess um, you know I think it would be best for uh, for that use case. You know, we our best practice would be well. What you should do is have um, you know use some very uh, have that image on your on your cluster and do a smart clone when you need it. That would be very fast. But yeah, ultimately, if you want to make sure if you want to get the quickest launch time as possible, you have to kind of pre-provision it. And um, yeah, the, another alternative though. So if someone wanted to do your flow um i think it may also make more sense to create the data volume just standalone at some point so they have the volume ready and then not use data volume templates at all so that like what you're describing would still be possible um just splitting it uh, splitting it up like that makes sense yeah um one more alternative I had uh, in mind is that you could potentially have a field on the data volume on when when it is provisioned. No, that would make sense. No, it would be a field probably on the VM level. I mean, the data volume, um, the data volume doesn't know uh, kind of when the VM is that doesn't know anything about VMs. So it oh, doesn't I see. really when it's needed. Because so it, it, it's the it's the vert controller that's creating the data volume. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then it would be at the VM level as to when when to provision this particular data volume, and if it is already provisioned, then that uh, when to provision will be no op. So in other words, the new field would effect in such a way that. The field is specified. Word controller does not create that data volume. The restore software uh, that this person is reporting will create that data volume for instead of the word controller. And then when word controller starts the VMI for this VM, it already sees that this data volume is present and does not uh, create at that time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm kind of hesitant to add a new API field for this, though. I, I think. Um, I, I'm also. I mean, I, I, I will share. I mean, my way of thinking is is that if you want to add a new field or you want to control a behavior, in a way, then I think in, that is the case that you really need to to reason for, like. If this is, if you expect now to break, uh, completely break users, like uh, that it's most likely that you will break them, then maybe you need to take some actions and add maybe a field so they you can control it or make it easier for them. But if this is like uh, you add more time or uh, or or something like like what I heard until now, I don't think it's, it merits a new field. It just adds more complication. And it it's also assumed that someone who even cares about this or it it matters. If if in, if you do this change and later someone complains that this causes his, his problems, maybe then you, we can find a solution for it, not, not before. And I will also ask, is it like, do we have any contract that says that this is going to be created before and not or not immediately no. when we if there is no contract then it's like we are we are not obligated to do this like uh, this way i guess right yeah yeah i i i, I, uh, I tend to agree yeah so i i do have slightly different um, opinions on this one which is even though if we don't have specific contract that uh, that governs the behavior like this. A lot of time, users make automation 
based on the observed behavior. And, and you see this with uh, Kubernetes a lot, right? I'm pretty sure there is a there are a lot of pipelines out there which depend on how a kubelet mounts storage or or things like that. And because Kubernetes does really care about behavior, that's why they don't um, you know try to break such uh, behavior. Um, and while kubert is not that popular, we might not have that many users, we should still strive for that kind of um, that kind of process where if people have automation built around our APIs and, and the behavior of it, we should not uh, break. We should try not to break them. So that's my stance. While while I do agree that the chances of this feature being uh, you know, changing this behavior affecting users and breaking them is very negligible. So I'm not really opposed to one way or the another. But if we do end up changing the behavior here, I would really like to document that the reason for letting this behavior change was that we don't have any data points that anyone would be broken. If there was a slightest doubt that somebody might have been broken, we would have uh, chosen an alternative so that future us don't use this as a bad example. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Um, but my thinking is looking, yeah. Um, I, I feel that, um, yeah, I, I totally get it. Someone, uh, could be depending on this behavior, but I think it is looking back on it. Like if I was going to re-implement this, I, I think that, you know, not doing it when the, not like the behavior that we, that I want to have is, is the better thing to do. Um, and if they, if you, if a user wants fine grained control about when disks are populated and, they, they can create data, volume, data volumes on their own and not use data volume templates. Um, yeah. So that, that would be my, you know, like for people to care about the, the minute details, just create and manage them yourself. Correct. Yes, no, I 100% agree on both of your points. As in, that's the better way to do it. And um, you should be managing data volumes if you're yeah. doing complicated things, right? Yeah. But but uh, that while I agree with those, this as I said, this feature should not break people. But if if for other features which could break feet, break uh, people, and somehow we have done it in a wrong way, I think we need to live with that error. That that's what I'm trying to uh, suggest here. Uh, it, with regards to this PR, yes, I'm definitely on board with you know, taking that on. Okay. Um, well, I'll uh, when I create the the PR, I'll, I'll I'll tag you in it. We can continue the discussion there. Um, but yeah, sure. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so yeah. I'll maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I just think that the the this behavior is, is not great as it is. So, um, thanks for the discussion. Um, I'm gonna do. I think I'll I'll do the PR with with the change, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll have further discussion in the PR and, and document it uh, where appropriate elsewhere as well. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Mike, Thank for for bringing this up. Thank you. Yeah, I got to drop too, but thanks for the help, guys. I'll uh, ho I'll hope to pop in on on more of these meetings. Um, <laughs> this is yeah. pretty interesting. Okay, thanks. Bye. Right. By the way, this I think this one is is worth uh, taking as a. I mean, the topic itself. There is there is an old. Uh, I don't remember the name, but there is how how dependent people are on the an API. Uh, that are not part of the contract. Like you have an API, and you have a contract, but people get start to get dependent, not on that, but on the on the side effects of that API. 
and I don't remember the name of it, I'll, I'll check it out. But I think the example that you gave that someone can be dependent on the behavior that it is created before or uh, in advance or stuff like that, I, I could come and argue that someone can be dependent that on a specific, uh, on that covert is, is working in livered version uh, 1.2 or something like that. I don't know what's up the number. So the, he can depend on that and he can do some checks that depend on that low level uh, behavior. It can depend on the fact that it runs on a node with a specific kind of version. It, it depends on that because this is how he saw the that the system works. But in reality, no one told him that the kernel will be kept like this. No one told him that, he, that this is the liberal version that will continue working. So all of that were a side, a side effects and assumption that the user took. And he, he decided to depend on, on not on directly on the API contract, but on other things. So in this case, I think I mean, if that's what he depends on, then I don't think we can fix it for him. I mean, anything that we will change, we can change and we will cause all kinds of uh, timing things. And, and I don't I don't see how we are able to. Um, yeah. yeah. And I hope you understand. It's like. No, no, you're 100% you're uh, correct. And I, I do understand that we can't care about all the small things that people have built automation on, right? But this one, for, for this one, it it is very much under our control, right? The fact that word controller creates and pre-populates that, sorry, creates that particular object from the template, it's under our control. Uh, all of the things that are happening is the cube word uh, code base and the cube word stack, right? And and for example, if there are uh, users who want to create some kind of automation on, okay, do I want to clear the PVCs that have not been, uh, you know, restore or I don't know. I'm just making up, making up things. I, I do feel that we we should care about those users which are immediately impacted by how those data volumes are being generated. So what I'm trying to say is this example and the very minute libvert node level details uh, example somehow doesn't feel analogous to me because these side effects are immediately in the kubert code base. The other side yeah. effects are much further away, uh, which is not governed by us. Yes, but, but, but let's agree on something else. Maybe we'll try to guess on, let's say, that you fixed a bug now in the system. And because you fixed the bug, in, instead of starting a VM that starts, at least takes, for let's say that if you check, it will take at least yeah. 10 seconds until the VM is starting, okay? Because how things are working with, uh, in uh, in covert. But let's say you fix now something in the code, and now it takes, it can take even two seconds. Not 10 seconds, two seconds. So you improved it, right? You made it the VM coming come up faster because you improve some um, asynchronic or reconciliation things there. So you change the behavior. You move from minimum 10 seconds to minimum two seconds. And you could argue the same thing that in that 10 seconds, someone could do all kinds of things and it worked for him. But now because it's it's better than it's two seconds. And then now he, he will not manage to do that things that he did before, and it will break for him. And and this is what I, I think there is a problem with the, with the assumption. I mean, someone may assume that because of how he, the system works, something happens and he can do it, but in next version, it will be better improved and it will be differently, it will work differently. And and if, if he depended on that, then it, he has a problem. He should have made his code uh, not not depend on that that it will take the VM ten seconds to come up. He should have he should have considered even that it can come up immediately and do whatever he needs to do in order to implement his stuff. This is what I meant. I hope you I mean it, to me it sounds like this at the moment. Like 
you increase the time now, maybe like uh, you create a VM and you start it and it may take more time for the VMI to come up. Uh, before it took uh, two seconds, now it will take in 10 seconds, the first one, the second one probably it will be faster maybe. and so on. That's that's what I try to... Yeah, yeah I, I, I understand your point. I, I think both of those are different topics as to whether or not we are regressing performance and whether um, we are breaking people who have built uh, automation on the KubeWord ecosystem, right? So for me, having users trust in the KubeWord ecosystem is something we should care about even if that means that performance optimizations will come in with a feature flag and in a backward competitive. That's what Kubernetes has been doing throughout its journey. And I think that that's the right way to do it. All the performance optimizations that were put in the list, um, like the watch cache and, and the, the streaming list, all of them have been with a feature flag and they don't break backward compatibility. So uh, yeah, maybe this is a much bigger topic. We should, you know, take these examples and, and consolidate um, over time. I'm not sure if we should root for an agreement uh, in this call. Okay. Um, I see Lubo is here on the call. Um, Lubo, would you be able to walk through this uh, PR? I see that uh, it is almost converging to a solution and it would be nice to, you know, just briefly walk through what is being discussed in this uh, PR and, and, you know, what would be the next step if any help is needed from this uh, group? Uh, I think. I, I, yeah, I think he dropped. Okay. I know there is a there is a, a current for the shadow node. I think uh, there is a current suggestion there. Not to use really a shadow node or something, but I think the PR was updated with a, a different suggestion at the moment. Yep. Uh, and. Uh, and I don't know. Did you, did you did you manage to review it? I I didn't. I promised Ram who updated this to that it, I will try to review it, but I didn't. Uh, so the all of this came out of our discussion in uh, KubeCon, and I've been part of those discussions. I have not been able to review the entire proposal. Uh. 100%, but I briefly understand the preferred option and why we should take that. Having said that, my hope was that um, people who have worked on, on POCing that solution can give us a small overview. And then using that, I can deep dive into, into the, the design. Although if if this is getting, you know, if this is in need of a review and needs to be put on, like it needs to be time boxed, then I can take a look at that design even without. Yeah, I, I, I think I we should. I think we should invite Ram to to give to present it if you want. I will try to talk with him if he can join yeah. next week. Yes. Uh, what, what I was I suggest that we do uh, try to understand what he wrote here before, like 
as a preparation to that. Because I think he, he suggested not to use a, a different CRD, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm not 100% sure. There That's was, I think there was a suggestion to use the new admission check, something like that, that it can check and can do the work. Admission yes. policy, yes. Correct, yeah. So I can uh, get you up to speed to what is happening here. So there is a new um, <clears throat> feature that is being created in Kubernetes, which is validation admission policy. The, the idea is that there are APIs, there will be APIs in Kubernetes where you can um, validate CRDs or just core resource types um, <clears throat> based on some kind of expression, CEL, I think that's what they call it. That expression language will be specified in this CR or in this API. And then API server will have enough uh, input to, while creating that object, it will look at the expression and evaluate if that object is coming out to be true or not. So using that API, what we could do is for, for certain kinds of uh, labels or updates that word handler is going to make, it can check which service account it is coming from and which um, part it is coming from. And then API server will validate if that is true. And then, yeah, that that is going to be how this problem is, is solved. So I, I think the open questions would I, I assume the open questions for us would be, how would we recommend uh, dealing with this Kubernetes feature gate? Because a feature of Kubert will depend on a feature of uh, Kubernetes, whether it is enabled or not. So we'll have to find I a think, way to... Yeah. I think the, the, the base, the... The main feature in Kubernetes was GI in 130, so it's J already. The I don't know if there is another feature that was not finished yet, but I, I think it like I think here if you see the backward compatibility, it says that in 130 it's it's J. Yeah, that's true. But this is where I was getting at is no. even if we even yeah, if with... yeah. It's it's a, it, I think you are talking about that it's not fit the two two previous versions, right? Yeah. So we still need yeah, to so support one twenty eight and one twenty nine. Yeah. So I think this is a is resolving a CV, right? So I think it's reasonable to say that it is it's solvable at the moment only if you deploy it on one thirty. Although you could we could say that uh, that it is. Also solvable if you deploy it in the previous version, and if you if you actually enable the feature gate in your system. But I I will tell you what I think the problem is with that. That like downstream vendors may not have this option at all. Like, uh, like they don't expose such feature as a beta or alpha features on their API. So. In that case, they will not be able to support it. Yeah. So, so what so... what I was thinking is that is there a way we can make a feature flag of our own and say, okay, if you want to solve for this CVE, use this feature flag, and that feature flag will then underneath the hoods check if that Kubernetes flag is available or not, whether it's turned on or not, and things like that. Um, Mm. So, what, what, what but, uh, what, yeah, I understand. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if that will work well because then we'll have uh, at least I'm trying to think how it looks the difference between upstream and downstream. The downstream will have to be different from upstream, and that one is pretty nasty. But uh, I guess it's it could be done. I guess yes. If it if if the let's let's take an example. 
that I know of, for example, OpenShift, if OpenShift exposed that uh, option is better in, uh, in the previous releases, then I guess it can be done for, for OpenShift. But if it didn't, then it's not possible to do it. So it, it all depends on the- No, what I'm, what I'm saying is if, even if let's say OpenShift doesn't publish those yes. APIs or it doesn't have options to make that feature get available. I'm talking about the Kubernetes feature get available, right? Mm -hmm. So in that case, Kubernetes, uh, sorry, OpenShift installation of KubeWord will disable this feature flag by yes. default. And even if you enable the KubeWord feature flag, it will complain that you can't enable this because the underlying uh, Kubernetes feature flag is not enabled. Yes, it's like the operator will have to check it. Yes, or, or the right. operator or, or this, for example, HCO or someone will have to check it and based on that to do the correct settings. Yes. Right. Yeah. And, and maybe so, deploy the correct things. That's more correct, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, it could be checked. Um, but I'm, I wonder if this is a problem to, is it something that we, is it like a must in general that you will, you will release something and you will say it, it is working also in the previous version. I'm not sure that it's a must. Like, this can be a problem in general. Like, I want to. Like, so want for, to a PA, for GA features, it should be must, right? Should be what? For uh, features that have GA, uh, yes. that is, keyboard features that have gone GA, that is a silent contract we follow, right? that all three supported Kubernetes versions will be um, at the same level of support. Yeah, but let's say that you document that it is not. Let's say that you say, uh, you, I want to release now a new feature that Kubernetes release. I want to use it now, it's a new feature, okay? Then I want to say I, my new version has this new feature, but please note that if you deploy it on on Kubernetes 129 or 128, this feature will not be available for you. Can can we release a feature like that? Like, is it... We could. What what I'm saying is that instead of documenting having that feature flag enabled or disabled in a Kubeboard would be a better option for users. It, then yeah. that's what I'm. The, at least that's what my opinion is. If that is done with uh, reasonable, reasonably low level of burden. Yeah, I, I, what I wanted to say is that there is a problem here that if you, if you, it's like, it is problematic. That's a good, like uh, what you raised here is a good, a good scenario that you as, let's say covert releases a feature that in, let's say in the last version, in the last Kubernetes version, it is GA, so we can also even consider it GA in Kubernetes. But in the previous version of Kubernetes, it was not GA. So the question is, can Kubert commit to support it there? So I, I, my answer would be no, we cannot commit to support it as GA. We could, we could, say, uh, we could say that if you want to run it, like I can document for you that if you want to run it in the previous version, that was better in Kubernetes, then this is the thing that you should do. But we, can, we have, it's problematic for us to, to it's, it's do it on your own risk. We cannot uh, commit to support you there because it was better before and we are not supporting you in that. So something like that. I mean, if it's documented, I think it's fine. But yes, I agree with you that in most cases, you will prefer not to do it, but I think there are many scenarios that you have no choice. Like if you want to be, it doesn't make sense that you will wait three versions to, re to release a new feature in Covert because it was not available in previous uh, Kubernetes version. But again, it's... Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think this should be a good follow-up discussion once that feature lifecycle uh, PR merges because there is a case where uh, features of KubeWord will depend on features of uh, Kubernetes and we can handle that in, in a standard way 
in in that document uh, what i would be looking for is inspiration on how uh, kubernetes does this kubernetes might have dependencies on on like container runtime and things like that right so there will be precedent on how uh, it has been done in the past with other projects and then we can bring in other options that we have discussed here as well and, and document it yeah yeah, it's, it's, I think it's an interesting scenario for sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I have not taken notes, but after the call, I will try to create a summary of what we have discussed today and uh, yeah. put it in this document. Um, you can delete the previous April 23rd. Oh, I yeah, this was can canceled, right? Yeah. And for the next time, I I, uh, I don't know if you'll have time, but uh, there is a we have a uh, an in uh, we will have another case to deprecate slurp, which which requires an yep. exception. It's, it's a deprecation with exception, so it will be interesting to see how this goes. Hopefully we'll do it before we, we reach 1.3. <laughs> yeah, I, I did have it in, so I did a small walk through this uh, open PRs. Uh, I did have, it in my list of things to do to review. Maybe we can take this uh, the next time. Yeah, uh, sure. what I had uh, open is that particular PR, and then I saw one more. If uh, I saw one more, yeah, uh, design document. Let me find the right tab for it. Okay, not finding the tab. Let's see here. There was a, there is a, there is one also networking that's it's about. Uh, yes. Yeah, this, no, this, no, not this one. There is one that will go to merge already against oh. my opinion, but uh, the, the other one is, uh, is about uh, fixed IP, I think it's called. It's, I, I don't know if. Uh... Oh, it does not have label on it. Oh, okay. It doesn't. Yeah, because it's closed, I think. Oh. Sig oh, API yeah. only had two uh, PRs. Yeah. One open. It has the sig network on it. I think just check sig network. I think. Got it. I can just click the current one and it will show you from the existing PR. Yeah. yeah, this one, persistent IPs. Okay. Yeah, that's like a big one. The implementation is also, there is a PR for the implementation already, so. Um, is this also related to uh, the open PR, uh, open design doc we have, or SIG API? This one? Are they related in any no. way? Okay. No. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, we can discuss this uh, yeah. next time. Uh, I did walk through this uh, list. I did not find a PR that was urgent. So uh, this one is approved and it will go through, but it this is this does not have any API changes. I don't know why it got filtered uh, in our, um... yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. So, 
we can ignore for now. And the other interesting one was this. Obviously, we can discuss this next time. This is not approved, so we still have time. This one is approved. New annotation. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I don't know about this. There is, there is actually one. There is a simple one, but we can also add it to the next time. There is a simple one that is open as a, not as a design, but as an issue and a PR. It's IGP. Let me, I will share it. With you. <clears throat> yeah. I'm going to uh, put a comment on this if it is okay to wait for CKPI. Mm. It, uh, oh, I cannot find it now. Mm. Once again, ah, it was not with the uh, Network. Okay. Yeah, found it. Too many things. Yeah. Uh, let me. Sh I will send you the link here in the chat. This one is also a suggestion to edit. Uh, to add uh, another option of the model. Of the interfaces. Just one minute, I'll pull it up. Uh, okay. There is a small thing that needs to be discussed here, not more. It's not that complicated. Uh, it's just an example of an enum, I will say. An yes. enum. Uh, value that is added and what are the implications of that? Uh, that's it. I well, think there is no like problem because we don't support the backward comp uh, uh, downgrade, sorry, but still it's, a, it's an example. Yep. Okay, I've queued it up. So I think we have few PRs for the next yeah. call. Uh, triage them and make them topics for the next. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks thank for you. the discussion today. Um, I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.